I am definitely sitting outside. It's amazing to me in Canada how quickly it goes from winter to spring. Just a month or two ago, it was freezing cold out here. I think two months ago, there was even snow on the ground. So I'm very happy that uh, it is definitely spring. I almost forgot what I was doing there. I'm supposed to be checking my audio, aren't I? Let me just make sure that that is working. I have kind of a weird... Uh, well, we'll see if it's working. Three, two one let me just double check something looks like things are working i don't know why don't you let me know in the chat if things are working dave you can give me a heads up on my screen it wasn't but now it looks like it is let me start again uh or get back to what i was talking about it is spring it is beautiful out here today there are birds singing you can see the grass behind me is green um, you can see that the river, uh, the trees on the other side of the river are just starting to get their leaves. I'm actually sitting under my canopy again because um, it's a little bit too early in the spring to have good shade. The trees, if you look right here, the trees don't quite have big leaves on them. I see people in the chat saying, works perfect from my side. Dave says, seems good to me. That's awesome. Hey, I did want to show you that I have a road cam set up. You can see a biker going by over there. I decided that I would set my second camera up facing the road this morning instead of the river so that you can see um, if things go by. You did just miss it. A whole row of motorcycles went by. It was very, very cool. Anyways, we're here to learn English. You're here to ask me some questions. There is a link that uh, Nightbot just shared in the chat. It's also in the description below. Please use that to ask questions and I will try to answer as many of them as possible. Um, Mode says, oh, beautiful. I can hear the birds too. Yep, you can kind of hear them. The problem, if I stop talking though, is my mic actually cuts out. So you'll hear them for a split second and then the mic turns off it's automatic in the software but if I talk quietly you can hear the birds behind me you can also see if I go to my road cam let me put my little face up in the corner uh, you can see a little bit in the lawn that the dandelions are growing in the distance you can see some daffodils as well but uh, definitely things here very spring-like okay um so I should start answering some questions shouldn't I let me get some questions up on the screen uh let's do this um, by the way, welcome to all of you who are here. It's good to see you. Let's see here. From India, we have this question. What does it feel like to have a channel with 1.45 million subscribers? I know this is going to sound funny, but I don't think about it that often. <laughs> I've mentioned this before. The most exciting thing for me is to make things. Um, it is nice to see when lots of people watch a video or when lots of people come and watch a live stream. That is a nice feeling, but I don't think about the subscriber count very often. In fact, I haven't even hung up my 1 million subscriber plaque from YouTube. Um, oh, there's a big truck going by. You're, you're going to see lots of road activity today if I leave that screen open. So the, the real answer, I don't think about it very often. Oh, Ananya, Roy, why don't you show us your family? So Jen and I believe that um, sharing your life online is a very personal decision. I have decided to make English lessons and be online. Sometimes Jen joins me. Every once in a while, you'll see Jen. But our children, we have told them that until they are about 16 or 17, uh, we're, it's, we're not going to put them on in my videos. They have been in one or two of my videos um, briefly, but uh, generally we just don't. Um, when they're older, if they choose to be online, they can. And then I will share that with you if they choose to have a YouTube channel or something like that. But for now, we would like to respect their personal privacy. Renata has the next question. Good morning, Bob. How are you today? Do native English speakers say written out in full as in 1971, ones. thank you. Yeah, sometimes we say write out the date or write it out in full or write your name 
write it out in full. When you say write it out in full, you would say your first name, your middle name, if you have one, and your last name. You would write it out in full. Let me see here. Next question from White House. What do you love the most about your children? I like it when they are successful. I like it when my kids do something and it's really, really awesome. Like they do a really good job on something. So in school, I love it when my kids do well on a test. I love it when they win an award. I'm a typical parent. (laughs) Um, But generally, I think what I love most is when they are better at something than I am. Some of my kids are more patient than me. I'm not a very patient person. So I really love that about them. I love that they are very, very patient. Uh, Chandanag Nagar, do your kids listen to you most of the time? Not all of the time. They are normal children. So sometimes Jen and I say something and they don't listen. Like maybe Jen and I leave for the day and we say, please do the dishes while we're gone. And we might come home and the dishes aren't done. That can be a little bit frustrating as a dad. Um, West Bengal, what is your favorite quote? Well, I do, there is one quote and I don't know who said it. And it's something about nothing's foolproof because fools are so ingenious. I don't know what I like about that quote, but I do like that quote. Um, There's another one too. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's a good quote as well. I do like that one. Let me have a little sip of water here. We'll go to road cam while I have a sip of water. If maybe you'll see something drive by that's interesting. And I do want to do a little audio test for a sec. I'm always a little extra nervous. A little more nervous when I'm doing a lesson outside that things will go wrong because I have to carry all of my equipment outside. Uh, next question. Here we go. Let's do questions like this for a sec. Hoogly says, when are you going to come to India? Well, as many of you know, there's an order to my world travels once they do begin, which is not anytime soon. Country number one will probably be either the Netherlands or France. Country number two will either be the Netherlands or France, depending on which one I go to first. India would definitely be in my top 10. But I'm not going to go into details about which countries I will be visiting someday because I don't want people to be too annoyed. Uh, Let's see here. I do want to stop and say uh, hi to the 259 people watching. I do just think that is very awesome. It's cool to have you here. I'm excited to have so many people watching. It's a little, if the question about subscribers, I think more about the number of people watching a live stream, when it gets up to three or 400, I start to feel like there's a lot of people. So we'll, we'll see where we get to today. Toda, what's the best part of your life? So I can't really say what the best part of my life is. I guess I, if I was to say the best part of my life, probably being married to Jen and having kids, that would be the best part of my life. Second to that would be, I do really like teaching people. I really enjoy that. The best part of my day though, is when I go for a good walk. And then when I'm done, I always feel like I've, I've done the right thing to stay healthy. That's the best part of my day. Let's see here. Sarah has the next question. How and where Can someone find an affordable tutor to practice English in a safe environment? Have you any recommendations? So I usually recommend Preply because that's what I'm familiar with. There is a link in the description below. When I was practicing my French, I found three different tutors on Preply and the price was very reasonable. It was very affordable. It did cost money. That's my best recommendation is look for someone on there. And I understand your question relates to a safe environment. When you go through an official service, you can see how many stars the person has and you can pick someone who you think you will be able to learn from. So um, yes, affordable, generally English tutors are more expensive than tutors in other languages, but hopefully you are able to find someone. Let's see here from Max. Hello, Mr. Bob. 
Have you seen the coronation of King Charles III today? I have not. <laughs> it was really amazing. I was in London in 2019 and I'm very sad I couldn't be there today. So uh, I did not get up and watch that. Um, I might see snippets of it later on YouTube. Um, I am not someone who, I mean, I like King Charles and I like the monarchy, but I'm not someone who watches everything about them. Some people really, really like it. If there is a royal wedding, Jen will watch that, but we did not watch the coronation. As a Canadian, I probably should have. I probably should have um, as a Canadian citizen. Uh, next question from Sally. Hi, teacher Bob. Happy to see you again. What do you think about the stock markets and do you have any experience in it? No, I don't know much about the stock market. I know people invest money in the stock market and if the company does well, the value of the stock goes up and they hope to someday sell it at a profit. What I know is I have a job and at my job, we have a pension. So a certain amount of money every month goes into my pension and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to manage it. It's all done automatically for me. So I should probably become um, wiser when it comes to stocks and investing, but I just let it happen the normal automatic way. Let's see here from Judith. Welcome. Long time no see. What kind of cheese do you love the most and why? So that's an interesting, what kind of cheese? We have a kind of cheese called Dutch cheese here in Canada, which is cheese from Holland. And then the real name is Gouda, G-O-U-D-A, Gouda. I really like that cheese. And I really like aged cheddar, like really old cheddar cheese. But definitely I do like Gouda for sure. Hey, I see Brent's here from Speak English with this guy. Good to see you, Brent. Thanks for jumping in the chat and saying hi. It's always good to see Brent when he uh, pops in. Brent did just have a live stream before this. I'm not sure if you had a chance to watch it, but you can always watch it later or one of his other videos if you visit his channel, Speak English with this guy. Let's see here. Next question from Unsel. Hi, Unsel. Oh, big truck. I don't know why. I don't know why that's exciting for me. When I was a kid, we would get excited when big trucks drove by on the road. Um, that was a big deal for us. We would go like this to try and get them to honk their horn. Anyways, dear, hi, dear, sorry, Unsel. I stopped halfway through your question. Um, hi, dear teacher, Bob, how is it going? I've heard that an online sales site called Etsy is widely used in North America. Do you use it too? Love from Istanbul, bye. I have not used it. What Etsy is, is a place where when people make things, they can sell it online through Etsy. So I haven't really bought much from Etsy. I don't know a lot about it. I know Jen has looked at stuff on Etsy. I'm not sure if she's bought anything from Etsy. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Azaz says, hi, Bob. How have you been? Good. I hope you've been good as well. Why? I'm going to flip the words. Why didn't you upload the short version of some lessons like signs and New Year's resolutions? I'm pretty sure I did. I can double check that. I'll go back. But it might be that I did those a long time ago and I haven't done them again in order to create a shorter version. So a long time ago, I only did Friday live streams. I didn't create a shorter version of it. Uh, so they might be from that era from before that. Andre Padron. Hi, Andre. Please check my conditionals. If I had been born in Canada, I'm going to add a bin. If I had been born in Canada, I would be Canadian. So if I had been, B-E-E-N, -E -E bin or bean, if you want to overpronounce it. If I had been born in Canada, I would be Canadian too. If I would have been born in Canada, I would speak perfect English. Give me examples. Yes. So the second one is correct. If I would have been born in Canada, I would speak perfect English. Um, the first one though, I would say if I had been born, if I had been born in Canada, I would be Canadian. Sorry, I just had to think that through again. Uh, give me some examples. Um, if I had been born in France, I would speak perfect French. If I had been born in France, I would probably live on a French farm and be milking cows and making French cheese. Um, if I would have been born in France, I would have been excited to retire at 62 instead of 65. Sorry to bring up a sore point for those of you from France. I know you guys 
normally retire at 60 or 62, a little earlier than Canadians. Uh, from Vinod, let me go to road cam for a sec, people, and have a sip of water. And I was going to make it a point of actually reading the chat a little bit while I was doing this. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, some people chatting away. Always good to see people chatting. Ario is here. Good to see Ario. Mode Ags is here. Good to see you too, Mode. Judith is here. Madi. Um, fun, fun, fun. Okay, let me get back to the questions. From Vinod. How to improve my communication skills, speaking and writing. So there are a lot of theories on this. My theory has always been whatever you practice, you get better at. Um, it's kind of a simple theory. So my recommendation would be to improve your communication and in terms of speaking you need to speak more you need to have more conversations if you can hire a tutor to have structured english conversations once or twice a week and the same for writing see if you can find someone who you can write to and practice that writing a lot i i know that's a simple solution like how do i get better at jumping go jump it it sounds a little bit silly but It does actually work. It is good to practice as much as you can. So from Rustam, hello, Bob, nice to see you. What do you think about Boris Johnson's hairstyle? Well, it reminds me of a friend that I had when I was in high school who had similar hair. It didn't really matter how he combed it. Within a minute or two, it just looked messy again. So I would describe it as messy. It always seems to be going off in directions all on its own. Um, Madi in the chat says, I'm enjoying the nice background. It looks cold, but a sunny day. Yes, it's not too bad in terms of cold. I am wearing layers. I have a shirt, a sweatshirt or sweater and a jacket on. So that is helpful, Madi. But uh, yeah, it's a little, there's a little bit of a chill in the air for sure. Let's see. From Julio or Julio, have you ever traveled to Africa? Love you from Mozambique. I speak Portuguese here, but I love watching your English lessons. Oh, thank you for watching, first of all. Have I ever been to Africa? Yes, I have been to South Africa. I went to South Africa on a school trip a number of years ago, way back in 2007 or something like that. So it's been a very, very long time. But uh, it was beautiful. I really, really enjoyed visiting South Africa. I know Africa is a huge continent and there are many, many more countries to visit. But uh, that is the country that I have visited. And we went to Kruger Park. That was really fun. From Brahim, the day of coronation of Charles III, my question is how to pronounce said and sad. Thanks in advance. I'm going to drop the S off advance. Thanks in advance. Um, so what he said was that pizza is the best food in the world. He said that. And for my sister, that was sad because she thinks hamburgers are better than pizza. So when you talk about a person who was talking, you say he said something. And if someone is not happy, you say they are sad. So yeah, I can see how it's a a little bit tricky. Uh, in the chat, Katab says, I don't have a question. I just wanted to thank you. I like your videos very much. Benefit from them and watch them until the end. Thank you very much for watching them till the end. That actually helps me, by the way. If you watch a video until the end, then YouTube shows the video to more people. It's always nice. Let's see here. Ha <laughs> ha, Natalia. Hello. Why do you never explain grammar rules? Usually all your videos are based on lex or lexiconal or Lexis stuff. Um... I like conversational lessons when I'm learning French, when I learn grammar, I usually just try to read about it to learn the rules. So when I'm teaching English, I am the happiest when I'm just teaching about phrases. How would you react in this situation? How would you answer this type of question? What are normal things to say? So I very much make videos the way I like teaching. I don't actually like teaching grammar. I think it's important. Grammar is very, very important. And I did try to do a series of lessons on different verb conjugations. And it was kind of fun. But uh, yeah, it's hard to make grammar fun. 
when I make videos, I like them to be a little bit fun. So that would be the reason why we should look at all the little motorcycles going by. We missed some of them. Oh, well, Bob was too late uh, on the clicking there. Uh, hey, let's get back to the questions. So let me see here. What are we at? 1018. That's pretty good. From Fatima, we have, hi, Bob. I was watching the news. Going to add a the. When a politician said happy birthday to the news reporter. My question is that whether saying happy birthday sometimes means different things too. No, I think we usually say happy birthday when it's actually the person's birthday. So I would assume somehow the politician knew that it was that person's birthday. That would be my guess um, for sure. Um, I can't think of another reason to say it. I only say happy birthday to someone if it is their birthday. Let's see here. Next question from Peter. Hello, Mr. Bob. How are you? Yesterday, I'm so sorry, I wrote my first name wrong. My question, can you explain to me either and neither and unless? Have a good day. Okay. So, either and neither or either and neither. There's two pronunciations. Um, I usually say something like this. Let me think of a good example with um, he doesn't like pizza and I don't like pizza either. So, he doesn't like pizza and I don't like pizza either. If I was to make a statement of it though using neither, I would say neither here I like pizza. So, a little flip there. I'm making the examples a bit confusing. Sorry about that. Um, he wouldn't eat pizza unless it had pineapple on it. Okay? So, there's a condition there. I won't do a live stream outside unless the weather is nice. So, we're adding a little condition to it. So, um, another example would be this. When I go to the grocery store, I can take either my blue van or my red van. And I can also say this, neither my blue van or my red van are new. (laughs) They're both getting quite old. We actually probably need a new van sometime soon. I'm not sure when. It's the, uh, the way things go. Mode. Hi, Mode. Hi, Mr. Bob. If I wanted to sit in or on one of those foldable lawn chairs, do I open it, unfold it, or set it up? What about when I'm done using it? Thanks. Love the bird song. Um, so all of them. When I go to, um, a party at someone's house in the summer, if it's outside, I take my lawn chair and I might set it up by the fire. I might unfold it. I might open it. I think set up might be the most common. Where can I set up my lawn chair? Oh, you can set up your lawn chairs over there. Um, and then when you're done using it, you fold it up. Yes. Or you pack it up, you fold it up. I'm going to pack up my lawn chairs. That would mean putting them in the car. I'm going to fold up. Yeah. Interesting. Because you don't unset it up. That's not actually a term in English. Um, I would probably just say, I'm going to grab my lawn chair. I'm going to fold it up and put it in my vehicle. Lots of options there. Hopefully you're having an enjoyable time going somewhere where you need a lawn chair. Uh, next question from Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. I wanted to ask, does reading aloud improve speaking? Thanks. You are, you rock. I'm going to take out the R. Thanks, Yaroslav. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think when you read out loud, first of all, you don't have to think about what words you're going to say. So, you can really think about pronouncing things properly. So, because your brain is doing one less thing, you aren't trying to think of what to say. You're just reading it off the page. You can really focus well on what you're reading and focus on pronouncing things well. I think it does. I think it's always good. Anything you do, singing out loud, having conversations, reading out loud, all of that will improve your speaking to some degree. Uh, for sure. Aaron has the next question. Dear Bob, I'm always confused by the day before yesterday and the day after tomorrow. Is there a better way to say that? Thanks in advance. Uh, Le lendemain. No, there isn't. (laughs) English is kind of funny that way. Yesterday, I went to work. The day before yesterday, I went to work. Today, I'm doing a live stream. Tomorrow, I'm not doing a live stream. The day after tomorrow, I have to go to work again. That's literally how we say it. The day before yesterday and the day after tomorrow. We aren't as advanced as some languages where there are many, many different ways to say it. Hey, I'm going to have a sip of water here and do a bit of an audio check.
I hope it's Le Landemer. Let me check for a sec. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm speaking French. Yes, the day after Le Landemer. Mm, I don't know if that's actually the day. Demain, Le Landemer. Demain is tomorrow. Day after today. Le Landemer means the day following whatever you are talking about. Yes, I think I got it right. My French uh, viewers will tell me in a moment in the chat, hopefully. Okay, where are we here? I am staying on top of the questions. That means I'm answering them at a good pace. There's like 14 in the queue, so I'll keep moving along. We will have members chat in about six minutes as well. Andy Park. Hello, any movies, shows, or series recommendations that you have in mind that will enhance my Canadian accent more? Do you want to be on camera? Okay, I turned the camera off. There's one right there. Just so you, just so you know. Jen walked by, but she's in her work clothes and she doesn't want to be on camera. So I have to respect that. Um, let's see. Any movies, shows, or series recommendations that you have in mind that will enhance my Canadian accent more? So what I would recommend is this. Look for the website cbc.ca. Um, I'll put that in the chat. C cbc.ca. Did I type that right? Yes, I did. So that is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Um, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation produces Canadian television shows. And if you go to that website, I'm sure you'll be able to watch some of them for free. So go there and look for some good Canadian TV. They might have movies as well, but certainly that would be a great place to hear the Canadian accent quite regularly. Um, in the chat, do you meet your relatives frequently, says Pierre K. How is your social <laughs> needs? Um, I see my mom quite often. I see my brothers and sisters quite often. I don't see my uh, larger family that often or my um, like relatives like uncles and aunts. Not as much as I used to when I was a kid. So from Ario, hola, Mr. Bob. On Friday, you mentioned about Ultraman on the Friday lesson on superheroes. Ultraman Agul is my fave. Ultraman has a different name. What do you think? I don't know anything about Ultraman. I was going to read about it after yesterday's lesson. By the way, yesterday we did a lesson on superheroes. Um, it's up if you want to watch it later. There will be a shorter version coming out tomorrow. It was a lot of fun, that lesson. Um, anyways, I will have to do some research, Ario, on Ultraman to find out a bit more about what Ultraman does and who Ultraman is. From Clive, I should have another camera pointing up because there's an airplane flying by. Not sure if you can hear it. Just a little bit in the air. Oh, I just saw the shadow of it go past on the field over there. From Clive, hi Bob, is it cold there right now? Just want to say hello. Well, hello Clive. It is not too cold. In fact, just give me a second. It is 12 degrees Celsius right now. So, if you're uh, in America, that's 53 degrees Fahrenheit. It's uh, 12 degrees Celsius right now. So not too bad. I have a jacket on. I have uh, a shirt and a sweater. I will be fine. Okay, I'm going to turn on members only chat mode. As I do that, I do want to say hi to the 328 people who are watching. Uh, thank you for being here. That's awesome. If you are a member, oh, just a minute, my camera shut off. I have to use my phone. There we go. It didn't shut off for you, just for me. Um, if you are a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat. I will continue uh, answering questions from the form as well as we do that. Uh, for a moment though, I'm going to give you a view of the road while I have a sip of water to get ready to answer whatever hard questions the members throw at me. Did you know you can throw questions? So they're going to throw questions at me in a moment. I'm going to get the next question ready. From Eric. Hi, teacher Bob. Greetings from Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, down in the southwestern United States, Las Vegas, Nevada. My question is, what is the best app to have an English conversation with someone? To have an English conversation with someone. So I don't know about an app specifically, but if you're looking to talk to an actual English tutor. I recommend Preply. There's also Cambly and italki, I believe. There are probably others. I think when you 
use a website or an app to find someone, you're more likely to find someone who's going to be very helpful and who is just there to teach you English, not for other reasons. Sometimes it's tricky when you're looking for someone who will do it for free. You're not sure what their motives are. Um, they might have other motives to get to know you. Um, but yes, those would be the ones I recommend. Okay, what do we got here in the chat? Mode says, but I don't think we should let grammar take center stage in the learning process. Oh, a good grammar discussion. So, as you know, I'm always like, do your reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Learn vocabulary and do a little bit of grammar. I always, I can't leave grammar out. It, it has to be there somewhere. For me, the best recommendation for learning grammar is this. The best way to learn grammar is to find a grammar book written in your own language that explains English grammar in your language with lots of English examples. Because I think grammar is about learning the logic, the reason why things are the way they are, and learning, having it explained, having English grammar explained in your own language can be very, very helpful. So, Mode, I agree. Um, it shouldn't be the main thing. Some people take classes and grammar is the only thing they do, uh, but it should be there somewhere. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. Uh, you've just said that you like Gouda cheese. Haven't you tried Mazdam cheese? It's also Dutch. Do you prefer Mazdam than Gouda? I've never tried it. The only Dutch cheese we can get here is Gouda and it can only be called Gouda if it's made in Holland or the Netherlands. Sorry to use both terms. The Netherlands is the correct way to refer to them. Rod is here. Hey Rod, good to see you. Long time no see. Uh, Rod is talking to Madi. I'm happy to hear that. Mode says, and I probably know too much about grammar for someone who doesn't like grammar. <laughs> yeah. The thing is though, I always say this, Mode, there are three reasons why someone might learn a language. Number one, they love learning a language because they want to be able to travel and use it somewhere. They love learning the language because it's, it's fun for them to be able to read in a different language. Number two, they might, for a very practical reason, learn a language because they need it for work. They need it for school. There's like this very good reason. And then the third reason to learn a language is because it's like a big puzzle. It's like a big logic puzzle where you try to learn how it works and how the rules work. That's why I learned French. I liked the big, the feeling that I was doing a big, I was learning something. I was doing a big puzzle, learning something that was puzzling. Um, let's see. Adilson says, hi, Bob. Say hello to Brazil. Well, hello everyone in Brazil who is watching. Great to have you here. Um, let's see here. Mode says there was a message before about grammar, but it was too long and maybe Nightbot flagged it. Possibly. Yes. Nightbot doesn't like grammar. <laughs> no, sorry. Nightbot doesn't like long messages. Uh, let's see here. Brent says grammar and then he puts a little, let me see. I can't see the second emoji. A yawn and then some Z's like it's a sleepy time. Yes. And then Brent, same joke as me. Even Nightbot hates grammar. I think Brent got to the joke before I did though. Lolly, what's the difference between, sorry, what's the difference between I wonder and I ask myself? They are the same thing. Sometimes I ask myself, why don't more people listen to classic rock? It's really, really good. Um, so, Sometimes I wonder, sometimes I ask myself. I would say they are the same thing. Uh, let's see. Let me get a question from the queue. Let's see. And let's get that on the screen. Filippo, there's a sentence of a Coldplay song that sings like this. Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones. What does ignite mean in that case? Thank you, Mr. Bob. I would guess it means... When you ignite something, you set it on fire. So when you um, want to start a fire, you can see my fire pit is right here. I need to ignite it. We usually just say light, like I'm gonna light a fire. But when you ignite something, it means that. Um, we also talk about fire as energy or excitement. So I would say in this case, it means it's going to make you excited. It's gonna ignite your bones, not in the way that you it's burning you. I think it's more like you're, you're going to be full of energy. That would be my guess, but it's tricky with, um, I, th I think this same question's in the chat right now. We got a double 
double question from Filippo. Um, poetry and song lyrics are challenging sometimes because sometimes you don't know what the writer was imagining at the time. Uh, let's see here from Mode Eggs. Do you call it a seesaw in Canada or do you use other terms like teeter totter? We call it a teeter totter, but if you use the term seesaw, people would know what that means. By the way, that's a kid's toy where a kid sits at each end and it goes up and down. Um, when I was a kid, I got hurt on the teeter totter. Not going to explain how. Freddie says the French people are now retiring at 64. They are angry about, they are angry about that. While the new king of the UK begins his job at 74. It's quite funny, isn't it? So I wouldn't be a king one day. Yeah. And the president of the United States is in his late seventies, I think. So yeah, in Canada, the retirement age is 65. They might raise it to 66 or 67, but I think that's just talk. When you say in English, you think that's just talk, then it means you doubt it will happen. Um, but yeah, interesting. 64. You guys, you can do it, Freddie. You, all of you people in France, I know you can. I know it's frustrating for some of you, but uh, I'm sure it will work out. Know that says, hey, Mr. Bob, what kind of flowers are in the cup behind you? Hmm, I don't see any flowers behind me. I do see flowers ahead of me. In the distance, I see daffodils. And in the lawn, I see what are called dandelions. Let me look behind me again, though. Nope, I don't see any in a cup. Sorry about that. Um, from Brent, have you heard the Beatles song New done with AI? It's amazing. I have not. I should give it a listen. I think Brent and I are going to be out of a job someday when AI starts teaching at schools. But luckily, we're both old enough that I'm sure that will be <laughs> that would be a long time from now. Uh, Lolly says, it's okay. Thanks, Dave, the Canadian. Think, I think Nightbot doesn't like me. Oh, I'm sure Nightbot likes you. Um, Brent says, I am able to retire at 62. Phew. Yeah, so what I should explain is in Canada, the retirement age is 65. Um, but I can take early retirement because of my job at 63. Um, what that means is if because I have a personal pension at work, not a government pension, I can actually work to 63 and retire two years early. So it sometimes depends on where you work. Rod says, nice to be here, sir. Sorry for being MIA for so long. No problem. I'm sure you were super busy. Everyone has work to do. Madi says, hello, Bob. My question is about your Friday lesson. How do you choose the lesson? <laughs> so I listen uh, and then every once in a while, uh, a couple things will come together and I think, I think I can find 30 words or phrases on that topic. So for instance, in the past, I've done a lesson on nature and that happened because I went for a hike. It's a nice truck going by. I went for a hike that weekend, the weekend before. Um, I just recently, uh, re what did I read? I rewatched the first Iron Man and then I thought about superheroes. So I did a lesson on superheroes. So. It's all related to my life and listening to what people are saying or just an extension of what I'm doing. Let's see here. That was from Madi. Dave says, sometimes Nightbot does strange things. Yes. Anna says, I used to learn grammar in English at a community college. I found it more useful than learning in my own language. That's interesting you say that because Sometimes I think I know more about French grammar than I do about English grammar because I had so many French grammar classes. Um, let's see here. Mode Egg says, oh, now I hate teeter-totters all of a sudden. Ha ha. Oh, there's a cat behind me. Um, let's see. They're on your left side, seven o'clock, I guess. My left side, seven o'clock. <laughs> Maybe there, the cat, no. This is just a bush. I'm not sure what it is. Jen would have to tell me and she's not home right now. Uh, let's see here. From Madi, I hope AI won't come at least after you get reputed. Yeah, I hope, <laughs> I feel like I'm being surrounded by cats here. Hi kitties. Um, hopefully they don't start uh, eating the wires or something like that. Um, from mode, AI will never replace Mr. Bob's smile or Brent's five, five, five head. Is that what you said? Let me see. 
Probably fine head. What are you talking about? I hope not. Uh, and then Filippo, finally I had an answer. Thank you, Bob. And also thank you, Brent, for not answering. Maybe, did you ask Brent the same question this morning? Uh, Freddie Wolf, what? 63? I want to be a Canadian teacher then. Mode says, honking geese just flew by. Yes, I can still hear them actually behind me. Uh, and then Hoa says, to be in good hands. It's very hard to remember this phrase. Do you have any recommendations for phrases like this? Like if you take a class with a teacher who's has a really good reputation, we would say, oh, you're in good hands. So think about any time where something's happening where the person in charge is very trusted. When you go to one of Brent's lessons to learn English, you're in good hands for sure. I love cats, two cats. Sorry for the confusion, Mr. Bob. Thanks a lot. No problem. Um, hi, Bob. Long time no see. Are you okay? I'm good. Definitely. Um, sorry, I'm having a little trouble reading the green. Oh, that's from Doobie. And then Brent says, new teachers in my state have to work until 67. Yes. And Madi says, the cats are roaming in the background. Maybe they have questions. They probably do. They have questions about the lesson. Hey, I'm going to turn off members only chat and I will get back to answering everybody's questions. Uh, let me find the spot where I click that. As I do that, I do want to say thank you to all of you who are members. You are awesome. I do really, really appreciate it. It helps me um, to have everything I need to be outside to do a lesson. It helps me buy the things I need to create good lessons each week. So thank you for being members and supporting me. You guys are awesome. Um, but let's get back to this lesson. Do you guys want to watch the road? It's very peaceful while I have a sip of water. I hear a car coming. Oh, it's actually a small minivan, I think. There it goes. It's a very busy road this morning. Not sure, uh, oh, something loud coming now. Mm, must be a young person. Oh, it's a sports car. I don't know if you could see it. It looks like possibly a Corvette. Okay, back to the questions. Here we go. From Nora. Hi, Mr. Bob. Is there any differences between borders and boundaries? Finish off, finished up, and wrap off. Could you please help me with pronouncing the word literature? So let's start backwards. Literature, things that you read. It's good to read. Um, reading is good. Um, literature is a great thing to study. So when I say it fast, like, let me say it slow. Literature sounds really funny to me. Literature, literature, literature. So litera, literature, we really compress that literature. Um, and to finish off and finish up are the same mish. You know, when there's a pizza and I eat all of it, I could say, um, I finished off the pizza. That means I ate all of it. Or I finished off um, the work I had to do that day. When you finish up, it usually means that you're finishing something you're currently doing. Like I'm going to finish up this lesson in about half an hour. And then wrap off, I think you actually mean wrap up. I'm going to wrap up this lesson in about 20 minutes actually. And borders and boundaries, borders are like the official, de, you know, demarcation between two countries. Where two countries meet, we would say it's a border. Boundaries can be anything. Like my property has boundaries. The farm has boundaries. You can go to the end, end of the boundary or the edge of the farm and you're at the boundary between my farm and the next one. So that's how I would describe that. Uh, let's see. Lolly lolly. When I play cards online, I sometimes get the message, shoot the moon. You want to add another O there, I bet. I haven't found any explanation related to the cards. Could you help me? Mark. Not sure who Mark is. <laughs> I'm, I'm still Bob lolly. <laughs> Could you help me? Yes. Um, so when you shoot the moon, it's when you take a chance on something. Let me find uh, a definition of that. Um, um, meaning, can't type here, meaning of shoot the moon. To try to do something that's very difficult. And it might be just specific to the actual game you're playing. Um, oh, look at that. There's campers going by. The weather must be really nice if the campers uh, and a few motorcycles have gone by too. So, and a man with a trailer. 
Um, anyways, yes, Shoot the Moon might just be something you do in that specific card game. Uh, let's see. Hello, Bob. It's up to you. Is it rude to say? Thanks. Not really. Uh, I could say if you want to learn English, you have to decide to do hard work. It's up to you. I could say to a student, you have homework tonight. Whether you do it or not, it's up to you. It basically means you can decide. Um, with students, though, if they don't do homework, they get a bad grade. So it's kind of up to them, but in the sa at the same time, um, they should really do it. Let's see here. Um, Ruslan, hello, the coolest teacher, Bob. No questions today. I'm just very happy the time for wonderful outdoor lessons has come. Best wishes, sir. Well, you're welcome. Um, I'm happy to be outside too. Sorry, I said you're welcome, but you didn't actually say thank you. So I think I'm losing my train of thought here. Anyways, Ruslan, best wishes to you as well. I'm happy to be outside. And hopefully I can do every lesson outside for the next five months. Let's see. May, June, July, August, September, October, November. It's hit or miss whether I do one outside in November. Um, I th I'm not even sure if I did last year. It can be pretty cold by the first Saturday in November. So we'll have to wait and see. So notice I used hit or miss. That means whether something could or could not happen. And we have to wait and see. That just means we have to wait and then we'll find out. Uh, let's see here. Iru says, hello, Bob, I need your help. Do you know the idiom or rather an expression, the childhood of the nation? And what does that even mean? I am so confused. So when we talk about countries or nations beginning, we sometimes refer to when they were in their infancy. That's what I'm familiar with. Like when the United States was becoming a country, they were in their infancy. We probably wouldn't use childhood, although I would understand what you meant. When Canada was becoming a country, it was in its infancy. I'm not sure if you know the word infancy. Um, when a company starts, when a business starts, the first year it's in its infancy. It's like it's a baby in some ways. So that's probably what you're thinking of. Yusuf, hello. Hey, Bob, love your videos. My question is best way to practice and study grammar for an SAT exam. So a couple of things. One, there are a lot of really good practice materials you can buy to prepare for the SAT. So you can go to Amazon or go to a bookstore and you can find some practice stuff. Like I know right now, if I was like, um, let's see, practice book for SAT. Yeah, there's all kinds, we call them prep books. There's a ton of them. The second thing I would say is um, specifically, if you're also learning English, find someone on a website like Preply, there's a link below, um, who specializes in that. Someone who will help you prepare for an IELTS or an SAT or something like that. And for those of you that don't know what the SAT is, uh, SAT exam is an exam that you take. Let's see. Um, it's a standardized test used for college admissions in the United States. So basically in order to go to college or university in the United States, you have to take the SAT and also get a good score. That's, that's critical. Orman, hello, Mr. Bob. Yesterday, I wanted to ask the question. I'm going to add a the. Do you know about the 12 year old superhero who stopped the bus and saved 60 lives? I did see a news story about that where the bus driver had a medical situation and I think passed out. And the one boy on the bus stopped the bus and saved everybody. Very cool. I would definitely call that kid a superhero. Uh, let's see here. Usually I check members only after members only just to make sure everything's going good. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Let's get to. Can you hear the geese behind me? Just a little bit. They're getting quite loud, actually. Um, let's see here from Anna. Anna says, hi, Bob. Would you say we have light rain to describe that it's not so heavy rain? I want to learn how to express what the weather is like. Thank you, as always. Yeah, it's spitting. It's a light shower or light rain. They sometimes on the weather forecast will say 
light rain expected this afternoon or heavy showers expected this afternoon. But that is uh, definitely one of the ways we would describe it, light rain. Uh, let's see here. This is from Abdikif, Abdikafi. Hi there, Bob. I have no question. I genuinely, I genuinely looked up to your backyard. Have a great weekend. So this is, it's very nice. I'm very happy I can share my yard with all of you. Um, I did leave my garden hose laying in the lawn here though. Did you notice that? It's just sitting there. I should have put that away. But uh, I am happy that I live here and I'm happy that as I teach English, I can share the view with all of you. Always fun. Nguyen has the next question. How to use seams? And I'm not sure about yo be. So maybe just the word seems like it seems like a nice day, but it could rain later. It seem the test seemed difficult. It's when you're describing how something is. Um, it seems like the movie um, is well made as a bad example. Sorry. But hopefully that helps the verb uh, to seem is an interesting one. It's used to describe what something kind of looks like. From Mikalo, hello, dear teacher. Today I have no questions because just, oh, just have a wonderful month. Thanks for your hard working, for your hard work to improve our English. No problem. I am happy to help and happy to do it. Lots of fun. Let's see here. From Aladdin, good evening from Thailand. Hello, teacher Bob. <laughs> Why sign and signal pro are pronounced differently? Because English is weird, but you are totally correct. When you drive along the road, you will see a sign on the side of the road that tells you how fast to drive. S-I-G-N, sign. When you decide you want to turn, you turn on your signal light. So with sign, we don't pronounce the G. With signal, we do pronounce the G. Sorry about that. English is just a weird language. Did I just say French was a weird language? No, I said English, right? Hopefully I'm not starting to say the wrong words when I'm speaking. Uh, let's see. Seems to be. It's a typo. Ah, mode is on top of things here. Let's go back to that question. Um, how do you use seems to be? Yes, there is a good one. I'll give you some examples. Um, let's see here. How is your day? It seems to be going well. That means that so far things are good. It seems to be going well. Uh, how is the game? It seems to be going well for the one team who's winning. What you're saying though is it looks like it's going well, but it could go wrong. It seems to be, the weather seems to be nice today, but it could rain this afternoon. So it kind of points to the possibility that something might change. Let's see here. Let me get the next question. So Landrick says, hello, teacher Bob, how to pronounce theater. Thank you for all your lessons. So sometimes I go to the theater. I like to go to the theater. Let me pronounce it slowly. Theater, theater. So theater, when you go to the theater, you can watch a movie. In Canada, we go to the movie theater to watch a movie. You could also say cinema, but generally we say movie theater. That's what we normally say in Canada. Uh, let's see here. Chris from Argentina. Hello, Bob, or hi, Bob. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. I'd like to know if, not of, if Smithville is a good place to live. Greetings. So Smithville is a nice town. That's where I have my P.O. box. Uh, if you ever want to send me a postcard, it's one of the towns that's close to me. Um, it's a nice town. It has a grocery store. It doesn't have a McDonald's. It does have four pizza places though, which is interesting. So I would say it's, it's an okay place, I think. Um, although I can't say for sure because I live out in the country. Uh, next question from Rashid. Hello, Bob. I won't just ask you about the difference between American English and Canadian one. Is there some big difference? Thanks you a lot, Bob. No. There is no big difference between Canadian and American English. Canadians have a Canadian accent. So our English sounds a little bit different than some people in the United States. In the United States though, there's a variety of accents as well. What I usually say though is 
Americans and Canadians can understand each other with no difficulty. If an American meets a Canadian, they have no problem talking to each other. In fact, if you go somewhere where an American and Canadian meet and they both, um, let's say they're both teachers and they're used to talking clearly and slowly, it might be a little difficult <laughs> to figure out the cats are fighting. It might be a little difficult to figure out which one is Canadian and which one is American. But when Canadians start to say words like um, about and those kinds of words, it's usually a giveaway. But if you were to meet Brent from Speak English with this guy and me in real life, um, it would be difficult to know which one of us is American because Brent's from the Northeast in the United States. Um, Canadians and North people from the Northeast where Brent's from sound fairly similar. I, I would be able to tell. Um, although I would say Brent does not have a strong uh, accent at all. He's very has a very neutral accent, which is good for an English teacher. Uh, from Johnny, your lessons are very attractive and easy to understand. Thanks for your effort. No problem. I would have to thank a bunch of people. One, um, Jenna is my editor. Uh, by the way, Jen is my wife. Jenna is someone who edits my videos. They are different people. Sometimes people get them confused. Uh, Jenna does a great job. If you're watching videos from last year, uh, for a year and a half, Audrey was my editor. She did an amazing job as well, but she had a job opportunity, which mean, meant she wasn't able to edit anymore. So she, she was editing and then she got a job for someone. So, I mean, a job is better than doing a little bit of work here and there. Anyways, uh, thank Jenna in the comments of one of the Tuesday videos. She would appreciate that. Brent in the chat says, what? No McDonald's? I'm out. We do have an A&W and we do have a Subway, but uh, yeah, no McDonald's in the town. A little bit sad. Hey, if you're one of the 355 people watching, don't forget to click that subscribe button. I always forget to say that. I should say that to people. Hey, subscribe. You will get notified when new videos come out. Uh, and let's see here. Let me go to road cam and have a sip and let me just double check whether I have any other questions to uh, answer. I think there's one or two left. One or two. It's been a while since I've done this outside. It's quite enjoyable actually. Uh, let's see here from the chat. Uh, no, that says, but there are four pizza stores. There's actually five pizza stores, but one went broke. In English, when we say that a store went broke, it means that they weren't making enough money and they had to close the business like permanently. It's no longer selling pizza, probably because there's too many pizza places in the town. Uh, let's see here. Um, Brent says, good point. Uh, Freddie says, that's the same with French, French and Belgium, French. It's slightly different, but so close. Yeah. I would say it's very similar to that, uh, for sure. Uh, how many languages do you know? I know English and I have learned French. So English is my native language. Um, and French is my learned language. Uh, let's see. Mode says, imagine if Brent was from the South and he exaggerated his vowels like they do there. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Um, although if you want to hear a Southern accent. I was trying to think if there is an English teacher with a Southern accent. I don't think there is. It's hard to keep track now. There are many English teachers on YouTube, many more than when I started. That's for sure. Um, let's see here. Let me go back to the form. The form is done. Actually, we are done with questions from the form. Filippo says, have a coffee. Thank you very much. Hey, let's go to road cam. If you want to ask a question yet, in the chat or using the form, go ahead, or we're going to wrap this up in about two minutes. And then I can go have some lunch. Lunch. That's the proper pronunciation. When you're being silly, you say lunch. I'm going to go have some lunch. Okay. Let's just wrap this up. Everyone. I have answered all the questions uh, that I have seen. I'll scroll back in the chat and look for a few. Let's see here. Nice river. Do you like fishing? I don't go fishing. I go kayaking though. And that's a lot of fun. Um, let's see here. Wanda saying bye. I think it's time just to say bye. Let's just say bye. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for watching this live lesson. I will be doing live lessons the first Saturday of every month. 
I am considering, you can tell me in the chat whether you like this or not. I might do an extra live lesson each month in the summer in July and August. Um, we'll see how it goes though. I have more time in the summer because I'm a teacher and I do really like doing the outside live lesson. It's something I miss but I did have to stop doing them because I was just too busy and I would start to lose my voice because I would talk so much during the week. So, I decided I had to give up Saturday live streams but hey, if you like them and you want me to do more of them, let's wait till June or July for sure and maybe I'll start to do an extra one per month. They are very popular so I don't mind um doing them. Let's see. Freddie says, Bob, you missed my question in the forum. Ah, interesting. Sometimes I do miss questions in the forum. Let me see if I see a question from Freddie. Did you put your name as Freddie? Let's see here. Freddie. There is no question from Freddie. I wonder, Freddie, if you used the wrong link. Maybe I put the wrong link somewhere. It could be in yesterday's. Anyways, ask in the comments below and I'll try to get to it. Sorry about that, Freddie. Thanks, Rose, uh, for the super chat. And let me scroll back. Thanks to Filippo for the super chat as well, well earlier. Anyways, have a good day, everybody. It was really fun to be out here. It is a beautiful day. It was fun to be able to share some of the nature that I, uh, that is around me with you. Um, look for a new video Tuesday. If you didn't watch my short lesson from yesterday, watch that because I disappear. I, I'm getting excited to try some special effects in my lessons. Uh, and new video Tuesday, live lesson next Friday as well. Uh, and all of the other normal things. Thanks to everyone who's a member. Thanks to all my regular viewers. Hey, if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day and I'll uh, see you again next week. Bye.